It's time to review Wild Child. Starting this week, guys, we will be reviewing the entire Age of Apocalypse wave from Marvel Legends. We'll be taking it um, a couple figures a day and be reviewing the entire wave over the coming days, so stay tuned. We have the entire series here and the Bath figure already built up, as I have been messing around with these recently on my X-Men display. So we do have the full wave to review, so stick around, guys. Hey, guys, me, host of Bizarro, thank you very much for tuning in. Look what I got! It's Wild Child from the Age of Apocalypse wave from Marvel Legends. Now to save us a bit of time, I have already pre-unboxed these prior to doing the videos as I wanted to play with these uh, as when my channel got hacked. Uh, they arrived just as the channel got hacked and I thought everything was over with making videos so I just wanted to play with these figures and have a good time with them uh, on my birthday. So I did take, take them all out of the packaging. Uh, but we are still going to go through and review them because you guys, I've been asked many times in the comments when I'm going to do the AOA wave. So I'll do a full, full, full wave review for you over the next coming days. But first of all, guys, this is Wild Child, one of the cooler characters, in my opinion, from the Age of Apocalypse. Um, definitely a character that has been used other than Age of Apocalypse as well. He has featured in it, but he has been used in other times, and this is probably the first time we've seen him in the actual Marvel Legends wave. I know he was featured slightly in the Toybiz wave, where he came with the Age of Apocalypse Sabretooth as a static figure. Um, but that's kind of the only time we've seen him, so this is a nice articulated version. We can finally got a good version of him. Now, the figure itself is pretty cool. So the head is on a ball joint, so you can make him look down as well as up. The hairpiece does stop you from using this as an alternate Sabretooth head, by the way, because it doesn't fit on the classic Sabretooth body, which is a shame because of this hairpiece here. I did try. <laughs> uh, but the head lifts down as well as up, left and right, of course. The arm does lift up, and you can also rotate his arms forwards and backwards as well on that butterfly hinge, which is nice. Swivel at the bicep there with a double hinged bicep there. Uh, elbow joint, sorry. And the hands are on ball joints. You can crunch it backwards and forwards with a swivel there as well. Legs do lift out all the way, as well as forwards and backwards with a top thigh cut. Double hinged knee there. And the feet are on rocker and pivot. And he does have holes in his feet should you wish to use a display base. But you never really have to with Marvel Legends. They kind of always stand up on their own really with a bit of posing. And the best part is this figure has not gone loose at all to say I've been using it a lot recently. It's stayed incredibly stiff. Now he does come with an alternate chain. As his accessory, sorry, a chain is his accessory. I said alternate. A chain is his accessory because in the comic books he was um, always on the end of a leash because he was a bit of a he was a he's a feral mutant, so he's he can go a little bit wild, hence the name. And you can attach his chain just onto the back of his collar there. If you just pull his head forward a little bit like that, attach the chain on and put his hairpiece back, and of course that stays on. It doesn't stay on it very well, so it will just pop off. As I'm saying that though, it is taking quite a bit of effort to pull that. But when I've been posing him and stuff, it has been falling off, which has been a real shame. Because it's a great little accessory actually, I really like it. It's a very cool and easy to pose up as well. He's got some really cool posability in this figure. Um, he's definitely on like a Spider-Man style body with all that articulation, which I like. So that's pretty cool. But yeah, all in all, it's a great figure. But what I'm going to do now, guys, is I'm going to head on down to the desk cam to give you guys an up-close personal look at Wild Child. So let's go down to the desk cam! So for those of you out there that don't know, let's do a little bit of a who is Wild Child. So who exactly is Wild Child? Kyle Gibney is a mutant who was experimented upon genetically engineered by secret empire scientists using DNA replicated from wire. He has superhumanly acute sensors as well as superhuman speed, agility, reflexes, coordination, balance and endurance. His teeth and nails are hardened and strong enough to to rend substances as thick as a bone. His body heals at a rate several times greater than that of a normal human being, but not at the rate of saber-toothed healing factor. He also has various animal-like mutations common for feral mutants like leaf-shaped ears, eyes, and neither pupils nor irises. Sharper than normal teeth with pronounced fang-like canines and elongated fingernails and toenails which can be used as claw-like weapons. As well as his hunched body posture, he is an excellent hand-to-hand -hand combatant with both special ops and military arts training from Wolverine as well as Canadian government's superhero flight program. And he also trained in acrobatics and gymnastics. In his bestial rages, he relies more on sheer ferocity and the fighting skill as Wild Child, the savage bestial side of his personality, was suppressed by an unknown drug, but the savage self is still threatens to overwhelm his sanity at all times.
as a result of injuries suffered at the hands of Sabretooth, who prevented him from getting medical treatment while Child was mute for some time. However, in recent comics, it shows that he's actually got his powers back, as long with his voice and the ability to speak. He was in the Age of Apocalypse storyline, House of M, Mutant X, Days of Future Now, and the Ultimate Marvel stories. He's also appeared on the television series in Marvel's X-Men, on the episode One Man's Worth, where he has the look of the AOA Wild Child and is a member of Magneto's Mutant Resistance. So in Age of Apocalypse, the alternate timeline, Wild Child was a member of the X-Men and was frequently partnered with Sabretooth. That's why we got Sabretooth in the video with him. Wild Child possessed a low level of intelligence comparable to that of a dog and the inability to communicate verbally. As such, he was kept on this chain, hence why it's come as an accessory. He was kept on a chain leash to prevent him from harming the X-Men. For a time, he was the sidekick of... Creed, um, so again, that's why we got Sabretooth, who had rescued uh, Wild Child from being a prisoner of Apocalypse's Sun Holocaust, but his current fate is unknown, but the 2005 Handbook of the Age of Apocalypse states that Kyle is away on a secret mission with the other X-Men who were not present during the Age of Apocalypse 10th Anniversary Limited series, though when Sabretooth and Blink revisited their home reality during a mission as Exiles, Magneto and Rogue revealed to them that Kyle had run away after Victor and Clarice had disappeared. So that kind of gives you a little bit more info there as to who exactly Wild Child is. So guys, here's Wild Child out of the packaging looking pretty swish. I really like this figure. It's really cool. I'm going to definitely get a second figure of this because I want the head, hands and feet so that I can customise my own Wild Child. Because he has been featured many times um, in the comics, not just in this form, but also he's been known as uh, Weapon Omega and Wild Heart. And he's also uh, been a part of Alpha Flight, X Factor and Weapon X. And so he's had very different costumes. This is just his appearance based on that from Age of Apocalypse to go with this wave. But it's the first time we're getting Wild Child, as far as I'm aware, in the actual series. Now, he came in Alpha Flight number 1 of 1983 with his full introduction in Alpha Flight 11 and he was created by Josh Brin. He's a feral mutant who manifested feral mutations during puberty. This mutation granted him enhanced physical abilities and increased rate of regeneration. He also suffered from a bestial freakish appearance, a bit like Sabretooth. That's why him and Creed always really got on. Um, hence why, again, we've got Creed in the background. Now, I think this would make a really cool figure to be able to custom and definitely give him an alternate X-Factor style appearance. So I'm definitely going to be working on that. Um, to go with the rest of the X-Factor wave, hence why I'm going to pick up a secondary figure. He was also good friends with Clarice, a.k.a. Blink. Um, I just couldn't find her figure this morning uh, to sort of put with him. But again, it's such a cool figure and a bit of an unknown character, really. He's always been known for Age of Apocalypse. He's always featured on the front covers of the books and stuff like that. Uh, but I've, I've actually only read issues one and two of the Age of Apocalypse coll collection. Uh, I got the trade paperbacks um, a long time ago. I've only read parts one and two so far, so I need to get parts three and four to finish off that storyline. Uh, so I know some information about these characters, but not all of it. So yeah, that's kind of who this character is, guys. But let, let's delve a little bit deeper into who he is in the actual uh, Age of Apocalypse universe. So guys, what are your thoughts on this figure? Let me know in the comments down below. If you enjoyed today's review, then please make sure you hit that subscribe button. Subscribing really supports us. It really helps us out and helps us to keep making awesome videos. Don't forget guys, we will be doing a um, another wave of Marvel Legends real soon as well. So if you are in the mood for more Legends, do let us know in the comments. We've got the AOA wave and then we've got another haul of goodies to go through and a second wave of Legends. So I'm excited to share with you what that is later on. Uh, but yeah, all in all, a brilliant figure here. And we've still got so many more in this wave to go, including Jean Grey. Um, there's a new Wolverine, there's a new Beast. And then of course we've got the Sugar Man Bath. Very excited for that one. In each video, guys, to give you... Because I know not everybody's up on Age of Apocalypse. So what I will do is I will do a, a little stint in every video. Like, a who, like who is this person in Age of Apocalypse. And give you a bit of a rundown as to what their storyline was in the Age of Apocalypse. And why they're in that appearance. Um, as I think it's important to understand why they've gone for the style they have done. And again, it's, it's, it's a classic storyline of the X-Men. But not everybody's read it. And it's quite hard to come by that comic now. I'm hoping to re-release it again real soon. Because when I was trying to hunt down chapters 3 and 4 of the books that I've got, uh, they're running up at like £60-odd each now on eBay, which is insane. So I hope Marvel reissues them. 
or I might have to grab that is it Marvel the Marvel Unlimited reading app and see if they're on there oh, I'll try again to sit on top there we won't <laughs> but guys thank you very much for watching as always I'm your host Super Sorrel, and I'll see you in the next video may the force be with you bye